Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine, where plant-based fitness nutrition. Um, this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. We're going to be talking about some really cool research on resistant proteins. I know a lot of you have probably already heard about resistant starches, but resistant proteins? Pretty interesting stuff. Um, and I'm going to go into why uh, the difference between resistant starch and resistant proteins, but also what is a resistant protein? What effect does it have on human physiology? And why would the body actually create or utilize resistant proteins and we're going to take a look at how they're used in the body, specifically the gut, why the gut could actually form them and what they have effects both directly and indirectly through their uh, benefits to try to offset some of the possible damage from other proteins. So this is pretty interesting, but first, uh, before we get started, I want to give a special thanks out to Ivan Blasquez. Ivan, if you're listening, <laughs> uh, shoot me a hey, uh, what's up in the chat box. Um, thank you, Ivan, for posting about resistant proteins. Now, don't get this confused. Resistant proteins are actual proteins, proteins that we consume. So let's dive right into the first study. The first study, I'll go ahead and pull it up on the screen so that you guys can see the link here, is resistant protein, its existence and function beneficial to health. So this is pretty interesting because resistant proteins don't break down just like resistant starches don't break down in the upper side of the uh, digestive tract. They break down in the colon, in the lower intestinal, a lower GI. Okay, so what is it? And I'm going to quote directly from the abstract from the resistant protein uh, study that's on the screen there. So the remnants of protein themselves or complexes with proteins remaining no longer indigestible. So these are indigestible proteins, proteins that make it past our stomach, make it past our small intestine, and actually find their way all the way to our colon undigested. Um, so they're referred to as resistant proteins, which exert physiological functions similar to dietary fiber and are also like dietary fiber that is resistant to digestion, beneficial for health. Pretty cool stuff. I didn't know about this. Thank you, Ivan, for sharing this information and um, pretty amazing stuff. So, okay, so let's dive right into it. So recent in investigations have revealed that um, different uh, ingredients, relevant ingredients, either condensed isolates or concentrates of vegetable proteins. Um, now, you saw on the graphic that I used potatoes because potatoes actually have resistant starch in them as well as resistant proteins. So this is pretty interesting that it's mostly uh, plant proteins that can actually be resistant. Now, why would that be the case? Um, you know, well, one person commenting on Ivan's post said, oh no, does that mean I have to actually consume more protein because some of my plant protein isn't getting broken down and utilized for muscle? And funny thing is, as we dive into this research, I'm going to actually show why this actually be, may be more effective or more efficient at uh, utilizing these proteins. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, so um, some of the reasons that they can be uh, resistant are cooking or denaturing of the proteins. So sometimes when we high heat proteins, um, in this case, plant proteins, they can denature, they can disfigure. And then that makes them a little bit harder for the enzymes to break them down because they're not configured properly for enzymes to actually break them down. Um, some protein uh, components can be inherently insusceptible to mammalian digestion. So some of the proteins, like the proteins, some of the proteins that are found in potatoes are resistant. So regardless of whether they're cooked or raw, it doesn't matter. They're just inherently resistant, just like resistant starches are resistant inherently. That means they're, they're actually that way in nature without being 
uh, macerated or affected, uh, sometimes tangled proteins, which is, you know, from processing can happen too, and that would make them resistant. But here's the, here's the thing that uh, we found that these things, contrary to, wait a minute, they're not being digested, that's not a good thing. It actually turns out to be a good thing. And I'm going to explain this because this study first goes into it. So among them, uh, quoting again, uh, among the medicinal benefits of several resistant proteins hitherto pointed out by animal experiments, unfortunately, I'm just quoting the data. I do not support animal testing. Um, there were preventative effects against hypercholestic, uh, too high of a cholesterol, <laughs> hypercholesterolemia constipation, corpulence, tumorogenesis, which is the creation of cancer tumors uh, in the colon, the liver, and mammary glands, breast cancer there, gallstone formation or poisoning, and wholesome improvements in enteric fermentation of short-chain fatty acids. Wait a minute, proteins making short-chain fatty acids? Indeed. Now, this is where some of the uh, inherent benefits may be coming from. So when the body gets to a place where a protein can't be broken down and it gets all the way to the colon, that protein could potentially be a negative impact because protein digestion creates ammonia. Ammonia is a toxic element and too much high protein without a uh, factor of butyrate production, butyrate offsets that ammonia. What butyrate does is form a mucosa around the intestinal tract to protect the intestine from that ammonia. So you eat the protein, it's broken down, it's released some ammonia, that ammonia would be toxic, but no wait, that fiber that you've eaten in the plants uh, then gets converted by the bacteria into short-chain fatty acids, one of the most important ones called butyrate. And then butyrate stimulates the mucosa, which is released and protects the, the cells the, uh, that are lining the gut and the colon from that damaging effect of ammonia on the, by the proteins. So this is where it gets really clear that how important resistant starches are. Like in potatoes, you have resistant starch, which then produces that butyrate and then resistant proteins. Now, as a fallback position, the body may be actually helping respond by utilizing resistant proteins as a way to create even more butyrate. So it's taking these actual proteins and converting them into short chain fatty acids, which is that butyrate, and then using that butyrate to protect even more against damaging effects of protein. So this is maybe one of the main reasons why we're seeing uh, when you eat a high protein animal diet that is devoid of resistant proteins and devoid of uh, fiber, starches, oligosaccharides, polyphenols, all of these prebiotics that are only found in plants, you got these high amounts of animal proteins passing through the gut, releasing a lot of ammonia and then stimulating the cells to become cancer forming. And that's why the animal proteins specifically are causing colon cancer and in this case, liver cancer, breast cancer, because these cancer cells can then form in the gut and metastasize, be released into the bloodstream and form cancers elsewhere in the body. So this is pretty amazing that the body is actually using the plant proteins as resistant proteins as a backup source in case you're consuming a high amount of plant protein, but you're not getting as much fiber to create those butyrates the body can then use some of those proteins to form butyrates to protect yourself against this cancer formation. What a beautiful system. And it works best when you consume plant proteins. Remember, there's no butyrate production hardly at all because there's no fiber. There's no uh, polysaccharides, you know, fructo oligosaccharides and all these different polysaccharides that are formed in plants. There's no uh, polyphenols. There, animals don't make polyphenols. That's only found in plants. And of course, fiber. 100% of the fiber is made by plants. Animal products don't have any. Eggs, dairy, meat have zero fiber in them. Um, the only place there is fiber in an animal product is in the animal of an herbivore animal uh, in the stomach. And if you go, if you actually watch 
carnivorous animals, when they kill like an antelope, right? A lion killing an antelope was the very first thing they eat, the stomach. That's because they have pre-digested <laughs> these uh, beneficial butyrates and, and fiber and things like this, already pre-digested by the herbivore animal. And the uh, carnivorous animal goes and eats the stomach, the innards of it, the intestines. They eat those first before they eat any of the meat, the muscle tissue of the herbivorous, uh, herbivorous animals. You notice that carnivores will go after herbivore animals because that's where they can get those benefits, the vitamin C, the, well, and, and in some cases, carnivores, they actually make their own vitamin C, but um, a lot of the other fiber and nutrients that are pre-broken down by the animal. Uh, but in our case, we don't need that because we are the herbivore. And you can see putting those animal proteins in there can create this colon cancer and stuff like this. So let's jump to the next study. I'm gonna pull the next study up on the screen for you. The next study is uh, physiological functions of resistant proteins and peptides regulating large bowel, that's our colon, fermentation of indigestible polysaccharides. So this is very interesting that these can be converted and broken down into um, uh, through the fermentation in our colon into these uh, butyrates to help protect the colon too as well. So when you've got plants, you've got the fibers, the resistant starches and resistant proteins all able to convert to butyrates, which protect, boost your immune system, protect the lining, prevent from cancer cell creation, all this good stuff. Well, there's more good stuff in the plants and I'm going to talk about it in a second. But I want to uh, show you uh, some of the uh, quotes from this study, which are pretty amazing. So resistant protein, this is a quote from that study that I just had up on the screen. Resistant protein might play a role in correcting the imbalance in the ratio of carbohydrate to nitrogen, which is protein, as fermented substrates in the cecal bacteria and promoting butyrate production. So this is what they're talking about. The body is actually correcting an imbalance of the protein to carbohydrate ratio. Now it's interesting, and I'm gonna jump to this next study because what they say really points this out with clarity. Um, so the next study, I'll go ahead and put it up here on the screen. So colorectal carcinogenesis. This is the formation of cancer in the in the in the colon. A cellular response is to a sustained risk environment. So remember the body is trying to balance the carbohydrate that has the fibers, right? The plants that have the carbohydrates and fiber with the protein. So it's trying to balance that by converting some of those proteins into resistant proteins to upregulate. So if it's low in carbohydrates and low in fiber, then the body will take some of those proteins and convert them into butyrates to protect and offset that. Now, if you're on a plant-based diet, you're gonna have high amount of carbohydrates and fiber, and you're not gonna have to worry about that. So Potentially, that could mean, well, the body doesn't have to compensate, so it won't form into resistant. It will actually break down those proteins and use them right away instead of keeping them as resistant proteins. So technically, if you're eating a high-fiber, high-carbohydrate plant-based diet, whole food plant-based diet, you actually could be telling the body it doesn't need to hold on to or form resistant proteins and can actually break them down all the way and utilize them. So, you know, to to the, the guy that was commenting on uh, Ivan's post, oh no, do I have to eat more protein? No, just the opposite may be true. If you're on a whole food plant-based diet, getting a good source of carbohydrates and fiber, you actually may be utilizing more of that protein rather than forming it into resistant starch and, and turning it into butyrate. Okay, let's go ahead and hide that. Now, I'm going to read this. This, this paper uh, proposes that colorectal cancer is a cellular response to prolonged exposure of cytotoxic agents, example being free ammonia. So when you eat a lot of protein, you're creating a lot of uh, ammonia. That's a waste byproduct of protein uh, uh, breakdown and digestion. So that ammonia, just like it's toxic, uh, when you get ammonia used as a cleaner, it's toxic. It's toxic in our gut too, but we have protective ways of keeping that toxin from actually damaging us 
and signaling cell cancer risk. So this is what is causing this, the high protein diet minus the fiber, the butyrate that would protect that internal digestive tract and that, pro that protein. So a high protein diet on a plant-based would have the protective effects of the fiber. A high protein diet on an animal base doesn't have that. And that's where those ammonia from a high protein diet can start actually attacking the cells, causing uh, carcinogenesis, the creation and formation of cancer cells in the colon. All right. So uh, I'm going to quote again from the study, normal colonocytes, which is the healthy um, colon cells, uh, faced with this unfavorable uh, environment of high protein, high ammonia, that toxic ammonia, uh, can transform into colorectal cells for survival. Now, I thought this was a very fascinating thing, because what is what it's alluding here to is that the cells are converting to a cancer cell for this reason. And I'll finish, uh, finish reading the sentence. Through epigenetic reprogramming to express genes which increase mobility to allow migration and proliferation of the cell. So this is a defense mechanism. When you got that ammonia attacking the cell and it's starting to trigger the cell to go into a defense, defensive mode, the cell says, I need to get away from here. So it needs to migrate. It needs to move away from the toxin. And two, it needs to proliferate for survival, repeat, reproduce more cells. Well, what is a cancer cell? A cancer cell is that gene turned on where it's reproducing and reproducing cells, damaged cells, badly. That's what a cancer cell does. And then what is metastasis? Metastasis is when those cells migrate to the rest of the body, spreading the cancer cells all over the body. Well, this is a defense mechanism of the cell. It's trying to survive when it's being attacked by this high ammonia from a high protein diet. Remember, a high protein animal protein diet, not a high protein plant, because the plant has the fiber which converts to butyrate and protects those cells from being bombarded by that ammonia. So you don't get that cancer creation effect, even with high protein consuming a high protein, high fiber diet. That's a big difference. So I'll even read directly from the study, the quote, high protein, low carbohydrate diets have been shown to alter the colonic environment with lower butyrate levels and apparently greater mucosal exposure to the to, uh, exposure to the ammonia consistent with our hypothesis. So when you eat the high animal product, high ammonia, that ammonia is toxic, goes and stimulates the, the, the cancer cell to form because there's no butyrate from the plant fibers, right? There's none of that because I haven't eaten enough. And there's no butyrate to protect that cell from being damaged by the ammonia. And then it forms the cancer cell and then it spreads to the body. So there it is, real close, showing a high protein animal protein diet with low carbohydrate. Remember, carbohydrates are attached to fibers. So that's saying basically low fiber can't produce enough the butyrate to protect the cells from this ammonia that is created when you digest protein. So high protein is not the problem. It's high animal protein or high isolated protein that is not combined with a uh, high fiber source. That's why when I created a protein powder, I wanted it to have whole food protein in it with a whole bunch of fiber in it, prebiotic fiber. A third of the fiber in there is prebiotic fiber in clean green protein because we use the whole plant, the whole lentine. So you're getting all the fiber, all that butyrate production, protecting the cells. So even though you're eating high protein and it's creating ammonia, those cells are being protected by the butyrate because the high fiber that's in the protein as well. 
That's the way nature intended. So that's the way I developed a protein. Instead of just isolated plant protein, you can start to get some of the negative effects that you uh, that you would get in animal-based proteins because you're not consuming the fiber. Obviously, if you take a plant protein powder that is isolated and has all the fiber stripped out of it, put it in a shake with some other you know high fiber fruits or vegetables like that, well, then you're probably a lot better off. Okay. How fast does this effect work? Well, <laughs> let's let's jump into that too because this is pretty amazing. So, one of the things that's in high fiber foods, one of the highest in fiber foods, is beans and grains, right? Well, beans and grains are also high in phytates, phytic acid. Phytic acid in the scientific community is called IP6 or inositol uh, hexa six phosphate. So it's an inositol or B vitamin attached with six uh, phosphate molecules, IP6. So what does IP6 do? Well, it, it protects the plant, um, but it also protects us. Check this out. Let me pull up the first one. Okay, so this study, we're going to talk about IP6 induced growth inhibition and differentiation of human colon cancer cells. So this is a mouthful. Okay, so growth inhibition. So we have a gene inside these cells, right? Let me go ahead and hide this. We have a gene inside these cells that has a switch on it, an epigenetic control gene that says grow or don't grow or grow really fast, <laughs> right? So what these stimulants do when the uh, cell is bombarded, the colon cells are bombarded with ammonia, a toxin that can damage the DNA, out of survival instinct, the cell turns on, grow really fast, so replicate, so you have a better chance of some of these cells surviving the toxin because the body thinks that toxin, that high amount of ammonia is going to kill the cell. So it tries to replicate itself really fast. So it turns on replication. So it's trying to recreate itself, right? Lots of cells, better chance of survival than just one cell. All right, that normally would be a good thing, but if you damage the DNA from the ammonia because so much of it is causing the damage, then you have a mutated DNA inside of here, and now its gene is turned on to replicate really fast. That means repeat itself or procreate or multiply. Now you've got a damaged gene copying itself and replicating. That's a cancer cell. That's exactly what a cancer cell is, a human cell that is got its uh, epigenetically got its gene turned on to grow, 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 and migrate, flee, right? Get away from the toxin as a defense mechanism to try to survive, for that cell to try to survive. But what you've done is actually damaged the cell, damaged the DNA, and now it's making copies of bad cells. That's cancer. All right. So in a nutshell, we're basically creating cancer cells by what we put in our mouth. And here's the whole process, but the plants are actually protecting us. How much protection? Oh my God, check this out. So IP6, and I'll quote from the study, is a naturally occurring um, carbohydrate that is abundantly present in plant sources and in certain high fiber diets, such as cereals, which is grains, and legumes, really high in fiber, right? Okay, so uh, IP6 has received a lot of attention for its role in cancer prevention and control of experimental tumor growth, progression, and metastasis. Remember, high growth, it's turned on its growth, so it's replicating. Progression, which is progressing into a cancer or deformed or, 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 or non-functional cancer cell and metastasis, which is the spreading of the cells into there. So IP6 actually stops all three of those things, but it does a fourth really cool thing. IP6 is a regulator of growth. It actually goes into the cells and turns that gene back to normal growth and normal functionality. That's what IP6 does in the cells. So it actually helps calm the cell to not go crazy in the defense mode. Um, all right, so how does how fast does it do? I'm gonna quote directly from this study. Um, 
The tumor mucin marker, and I won't go into the big name for it, expressed by precancer and cancer of colon, um, but not by normal cells, showed a time-dependent change by IP6. Okay, how fast? An increase in expression after one day of consuming plant foods high in IP6, that's grains and beans, beans and grains. Uh, one day of treatment uh, started the expression, started actually changing the epigenetic switch to calm the progression of it and calm the metastasizing, calm the actual um, replication of the cells. After two days of consuming <laughs> beans and grains or IP6, two days, it suggested progression, uh, suppressed the uh, progression and the mucin synthesis and the differentiation. That's it's changing from a normal cell into a cancer cell. That's when it differentiates. It becomes different. It becomes from a normal cell into a cancer cell. Stop that. And quote, uh, it, and it uh, su uh, suppressed the uh, regression of it, of cancer cells, with reversion to normal phenotype. Phenotype is the genetic, healthy genetic function, healthy genetic stance, not a damaged genetic code, DNA code. So the phytates, the IP6 in these beans and grains are actually taking cancer cells and turning them back to normal, healthy cells. You heard that right. Thank you, plants. This is why I talk about a plant-based diet. It is not about dogma. It's not about me being right and, and, and people eating meat being wrong. It's not that. Look, this is not turf wars. This is talking about real science. This is talking about what's going on in our physiology. This is about our health, our survival. And once we know this information, of course, I want to share it. I want to get this out of the labs, out of the research geeks' <laughs> you know, backyards, and get this out to the layperson to understand how you can be responsible for turning a cancer cell back into a healthy cell simply with your diet and exercise. How empowering is that? That's you taking control of your life. That's you not having to deal with uh, an unhealthy cells Cancer cells. All right, let's jump right into the, the next one because um, this one is important. IP6 in the, in the treatment of liver cancer cells. IP6, there it is right on the screen. IP6 inhibits growth and reverses, changes a health uh, a cancer cell back to a healthy cell, reverses transformed phenotype in liver cells in the cancer cell line right in the type of the study. It's saying it's taking cancer cells and turning them back to healthy cells. It stops that growth, which would cause the metastasization, the spread of the cancer to other cells. And at that point, it's very difficult to try to control um, because once it's spread throughout the body, once there's metastasis, that's the vast majority, I think over 90%, don't quote me on that, um, over about 90% of people who die from cancer die in a metastasitic state. Um, when it's localized, it's much easier to treat, but once it spreads throughout the body, it's very hard to get all the cancer cells, and that's why it's a problem. But this IP6 actually stops that process from happening, stops the metastasis, and reverses the cell back. Okay, if that weren't so exciting, this one is, is to me, almost, a, <laughs> almost amazing. And, and I'm going to put the, the quote uh, up on the screen too. But here's the study for those of you who want to look up the study. Breast cancer novel anti-cancer functions of IP6. Growth inhibition and differentiation. That means changing from a normal cell to, to a, an unhealthy or cancer cell. Human membrane kill cancer cell lines. I'm going to put this next bit up on the screen. It's a bunch of words, but I'll read it with you because it is so important. This is information you can share with other people that, you know, my goal is to help people live a really healthy, happy life. And this could save lives. So please share this information if you can, if you feel so moved to. Let's, let's do some good and save some people. Let's educate people and empower people to make better decisions for themselves. That first part of the sentence, 
after 48 hours, that's two days of treatment of IP6, our data showed the inhibition of DNA synthesis and cell growth and induction of differentiation of human mammary cancer cells, stopping cancer cell growth in its tracks, stopping the DNA from producing more cells, stopping the cell growth from happening, stopping the addition of more cancer cells to be populated. Right there in two days of eating <laughs> beans and greens and, and, and grains. Guys, this is simple. This is not, this is, this is the miracle of plants and why they're so potent and why they're so powerful and why they're so important to our diet that we should include them in every meal. <laughs> and this is why not just eating plants, but to counter effect the negative effects that uh, animal proteins can have in forming these cancers. So it goes on to say, taken together with results from in vivo studies, that's in living beings, humans and animals, IP6 may be important candidate for the prevention and treatment of human breast cancer. There it is. Please share this information. This is so important when people understand how powerfully medicinally healing these plant phytonutrients like IP6, helping control and, and re-regulate normal cell growth and population, normal uh, normalizing the cell and even reverting cancer cells back to, to just by eating plants. What a beautiful thing this is. Remember, helping that mucosa grow, helping and protect our cells from any of the toxins that come through, even, even the plant proteins producing ammonia through the digestion, at least the butyrates, the fiber that's in the plant proteins protects those cells so that ammonia doesn't cause disruption, doesn't cause DNA damage, doesn't create cancer cells, doesn't cause metastasis, spread of cancers, and then cancer death. In lots of tissues, not only the colon, but then they get into the bloodstream and can go into liver cells uh, as, as shown by that one study, totally reversing transformed phenotype in, in liver cell uh, lines and breast cancer. How many other tissues do we just not even know about yet that we just haven't studied yet? Can these positive effects of these phytates in there? So amazing study. Thank you again, Ivan, for sharing the information on resistant proteins why they're a part of our system, why plant proteins have these resistant proteins to add to a beneficial effect of butyrate production that you would normally get from eating plants to regulate the carbohydrate to, um, to protein. Because if you have too high protein and too low carbohydrate, where all the fiber is, then you're not producing enough butyrates. And that's why the body was got this self-regulating mechanism that if you're too high in proteins, even in plants, some of those plant proteins can be converted, converted to butyrates to make up for the missing fiber. Beautiful system, amazingly uh, constructed in here to protect our cells, make sure they live, make sure they don't form cancer cells, and even turn cancer cells that do form back into healthy cells like they should be, like they should belong. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this information. Uh, resistant starch, resistant proteins, all of these benefits that plant proteins. Uh, hit me up next week. Uh, I'll be here every Thursday, uh, with exceptions. I'm going to be moving soon again. Um, and uh, we'll be talking about all the latest research, um, all this good stuff, uh, the miracles of plant nutrition in helping our body and working with our body and how well our body has prearranged adaptive responses so that we can get the maximal benefits from plants and how adding animal proteins into our body actually disrupts that whole process, throws it out of balance, gets way too much ammonia, causes the uh, carcinogenic forming of, of cancer cells in our colon, in our livers, in breast cancers, all from just eating the animal proteins and not getting enough fiber from the plant proteins. So. Goal, eat more plants, uh, real simple, and make sure you're getting good amounts of uh, phytic acid, IP6. It could save your life. 
Awesome. Thank you, plants. And thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and share. Um, I will answer any of the questions. I know I've been rambling because I'm so excited about this research. Um, but I will get to the questions. I'll always answer every question. So if you have any questions about this, or if you want uh, me to email or, or Facebook message any uh, directly any of these studies, I'll also post them in the comments section. So if you're watching this on um, YouTube, just uh, ask about that and I'll throw the, the studies your way too. These are amazing studies. Um, I'll keep reading the research, keep finding out how plants are saving our lives, protecting us, making us healthy and strong, even at 60 years of age, 60th year of life, loving life. I hope you do too. I share this information uh, in hopes that it will help you. Please share if you care. Thanks for watching.